back. Ahead of the 2023 polls, Nigerians have called on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to publish where all polling units are located across the country. The demand comes on the heels of allegations of discrepancies in the registration of votes and voters in uh, Imo State uh, Governor Hope Uzodima's ward. To this end, there is a planned protest with the hashtag Occupy INEC for September 22nd, demanding INEC to make public the name and number of registered voters in each polling unit across the Federation. We're now joined this morning by INEC National Commissioner, Barista Festus Okoye. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right, let's uh, start with the issue of multiple registrations and uh, cleaning up of the voters registered by the Commission. Uh, where exactly is INEC on that? I, I, sorry, I, did, I didn't quite get you. Uh, I, said, I want us to start with the um, conversation on multiple registrations and, of course, cleaning up the voters register by INEC. Where, where are we currently on that? Well, uh, we, are, we are almost done with the cleanup of the voters register. Uh, and as, as you are aware, um, we cleaned up the voters register in, uh, in, in tranches. Uh, when we finished the registration for the period beginning 28th day of um, June 2021, and ending on the uh, 14th day of January 2022, we did publish the number of registered uh, uh, voters within this particular period and the number of invalid registrants. Uh, so the one that we are almost done with cleaning up uh, is the one that occurred between the 15th day of January uh, 2022 and 31st day of, um, of July uh, 2022. And so that's the one we have been working on. And we, we are almost done. And any moment from now, um, uh, we will uh, make public uh, our findings. All right, now let's talk about the reports that uh, have been circulating about the discrepancies in Governor Hopu's Odimas polling unit in Imo State. Can you please confirm to us, you know, the true uh, trueness of this or not? Well, uh, I don't know which one is his uh, constituency, really. Uh, but as, as we are aware, uh, when we finished the cleaning up for the first and second quarter, uh, we found out that 44.6% of all the registrants, we are double or, or multiple uh, registrants. And so we declare their registrations invalid. And if you look at the data, if you look at the demography uh, within this particular period, you will find out that no state of the federation was removed from the issue of uh, 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 double registration. And I'll give you an example. For instance, within this particular period, Abia State had uh, a total of 49.6% um, uh, um, of 49 of uh, invalid registrants. Um, uh, Bayelsa had a total of 67.1. Um, if you look at Gombe, had a total of 43.4. And it spreads across all the states of the Federation. There was no state where we did not record over 30% of uh, a multiple or double registrants. Now, for this particular period, for the period beginning 15 day of, um, of, of January and ending on the 31st day of July, what we have been doing is that for each quarter, we publish what we call a preliminary list, and we display that preliminary list in the 774 uh, uh, local government area offices of the, of, the co co uh, of the commission. And that's exactly what we have been doing. And so what we are now doing is just, just the final cleanup exercise uh, in, relation to the, uh, a voters in relation to the voters register. Let me make it clear that no new voter has been added to the existing voters register and so what you now have what people are, are banding about what people are circulating cannot by any stretch of imagination be said to be uh, a, 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 the list of those who are already in the voters register because you cannot get into the voters register until we clean up do the final uh, deduplication clean up the voters register using our automated biometric identification system and also using our business a process uh, called adjudication. Uh, so nobody has gotten into the um, uh, into the voters register as of today. Well, I, I also want you to respond to the um, CUPP's claims and also to those with the hashtag Occupy INEC. Is it, they say it's going to be on the 22nd of September. Um, someone here says fake names, fake date of birth on the Beavers database, you know, and other things uh, that they, uh, of course, are pointing out as their reasons for wanting to occupy INEC. I also saw a post, um, you know, by someone who is apparently named Additional Paul Monijesu, 
um, who is uh, apparently is meant to be a female but has a male photograph on their on their registration there. So can you help us understand where some of these issues might be coming from? Well, I, I think that uh, as a people and as a nation and as a country that has decided to embrace democracy and democratic practices, we must also be conscious and aware of the antics of uh, fifth columnists uh, who we want to um, derate the democratic process and also uh, who are not at home with the type of innovations and the type of um, uh, creative um, uh, uh, things that the commission is, uh, is, do is doing. Now, as we are aware, during this registration process, which spanned over a period of one year, the Independent National Electoral Commission deployed over 4,000 uh, registration officers uh, to all the uh, uh, um, local government areas of the Federation and also to all the 8,809 registration areas on a rotational basis. These were the people we deployed to go and do registration. Now, people do not understand that the beavers is not what we use for the purposes of voter enrollment. What we use for purposes of voter enrollment is called the INEC voter enrollment device, the IVEP. That's what we use for the purposes of voters' registration and not the BVAS. We use the BVAS when we are doing uh, uh, accreditation at the level of the polling unit to verify uh, the authenticity of the information in the permanent voters' card and also to verify that the person who has come uh, to the polling unit is the person who was registered uh, as, 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 a, as a voter. So what we use is the IVED. And I have made it very clear that at the end of every quarter, we publish in our state offices what we call the pre preliminary uh, 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 list of those who have come forward uh, to, to, to register. Now, there are some people who are registered before or who have been registered before and they went and registered again. Those ones are multiple registrants. So we weed them out when we do what we call deduplication in the type of in the cleaning up. If, for instance, we notice when we are cleaning up that the picture of a male appears against the name of a female, we do our business process, do what we call manual adjudication, and find out why that should be, be, be the case. The moment we find out that somebody is being uh, funny or somebody is doing something illegal, we, 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 we get it off, off uh, from, our, from, our, from our, our, our list. So that's exactly what we have been doing. And the nation and people should commend the Independent National Electoral Commission for the robust mechanisms and the robust processes we have put in place to make sure that we have a clean voters register, which is the, really the foundation of the electoral process. All right, um, Mr. Festus, let's talk about some of the claims of Nigerians. Now, we have reports that last week, Friday, 24 Nigerians sued on behalf of over 7 million Nigerians who have been, as, as they claim, disenfranchised. Now, a lot of them said that they started their voters' registration online, uh, but they were not given the opportunity to complete their registration. And about 32.8% of Nigerians have only, you know, been able to complete this registration. Do you foresee, you know, they are praying, uh, they are ask, asking for the court one order of mandamus, mandating INEC to basically ensure that they are given the opportunity to complete their voter registration. Do you see this happening? Will INEC possibly create an avenue for these Nigerians who have not been able to complete their registration to do so? Well, uh, we have gone too far uh, and we cannot turn back at this point in time. Let us be very, very clear about this issue. This commission is the first commission in the whole of West Africa to open a portal for online voters registration. And we did this because we recognized the fact that a lot of young Nigerians are internet savvy and we wanted to give them the opportunity to start their uh, 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 registration, do their pre-registration, and then go to our uh, INEC state and local government offices to go and capture their biometrics. That's exactly what we did. This started on the 28th day of June 2021. Then on the 26th day of July 2021, we started the physical registration. And this registration has gone on for over a period of one year. And the moment you go into a portal and you do your pre-registration, you are given a date within which you are to appear uh, before uh, our state or local government offices for us to capture your biometrics. And, uh, and I want to be honest with you. I want to tell you that within this past one year, sometimes we record just five persons a day. Only five persons will turn up a day. It was only during the last stages of this process that we had a surge and we had a deluge. 
and we responded creatively and robustly to this deluge by deploying additional IVED machines to all the states where we had uh, this, this challenge. Now, let me also say this, that the law, the Electoral Act 2022, makes it mandatory that any person, any individual who wants to register as a voter must appear personally before a registration officer in the constituency where he or she intends to uh, 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 vote and in the polling unit, uh, uh, I mean in the constituency where the person intends to vote. And the person will appear with certain documents, either a birth certificate or, or a driver's license or anything that shows the person's age, the person's nationality, and also the person's identity. Some of our compatriots who are in diaspora also went online and did their pre-registration, but they couldn't come home to complete their, their biometrics. This is part of the number that people are bandying about as people who have been disenfranchised. I'm saying that this commission afforded opportunity for Nigerians to come forward over a period of one year and get their registrations done. Uh, Mr. Okoye, I also want to ask about... Uh, um you've seen uh Boynek rather has seen a, a really really high number of new registra registrants rather um in the past we've also seen that the body has had one issue or the other you know one glitch or the other um which of course nigerians have understood as you know it's a working process they're developing you know the electoral process you know and there would always be hitches here or there is INEC ready for the number of people that will be participating in 2023 general elections? Because now you, there's more millions, you know, more that are registered and willing to vote. From 2019 well, and the issues that existed in 2019, is INEC ready in 2023? Well, we already projected uh, that for this particular period, uh, that we projected that between 10 and 20 million uh, our persons we will uh, uh, register or be uh, be part of the continuous voters registration exercise from the figure we have seen we are now projecting that we are going to go into the 2023 general election with a projected voter population of uh, 95 million and you also recognize that this present commission after a, a hiatus of 25 26 years it created additional pooling units bringing our pooling units to over 176,000. Uh, so we are ready for uh, this process. Uh, the chairman of the commission made it clear last week that this commission will deploy over 1.4 million ad hoc staff uh, for this uh, exercise. And we have already launched our portal for the recruitment of ad hoc staff. And we are doing a lot to make sure that we prepare and prepare well uh, for this particular election. From our own side, from the side of the Independent National Electoral Commission, we will not be found wanting because we have we, we, we keep on improving with every passing election. And with every passing election, it's a learning curve. And so we believe that um, with everything we have put in place, the 2023 general election will be free, fair, transparent, and inclusive. Um, Mr. Francis, very quickly, I'd like to hear your thoughts on conversations surrounding Nigerians in the diaspora voting in elections. Of course, we know that they will not be able to vote in 2023 elections. But shouldn't, you know, shouldn't we start to have these conversations now? Is it not about time? that we allow them also be a part of the electoral process? Well, I, I agree that the conversation should start. I also agree uh, that those who are keen in having people in diaspora vote uh, should also approach the National Assembly and get the electoral legal framework amended to allow people in diaspora to vote. But I want to also say that when we are talking about people in diaspora, we must also recognize that people who are in Chad, who are in Niger, who are in Benin Republic, who are in Cameroon, who are in Sudan, are also part of those in diaspora. And so when we are doing this conversation, let us not limit diasporans uh, to only those who live in the US, in UK, in Germany, and Italy. And so I think that when we are doing this conversation, let it be holistic, and we recognize the fact that Nigerians who are in diaspora, uh, both those who are in African countries, in Asian countries, and also in the, in the, in the US and other continents. All right. Thank you for your time with us this morning, uh, Mr. Festus Okoye. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, and we certainly look forward to having you again. Thank you so much.